Hey, it's iHeartRadio Canada. I'm Shannon here with Tyler Hubbard. Hello. What's up, Shannon? How, how you doing? I'm doing very good. Now that I'm talking to you, how there are you doing? There we go. I'm awesome. Thank yeah. You. yeah. Um, we actually have a little something for you because you just celebrated a birthday. Oh, yeah. Uh, Sammy's going to grab it. We, I wow, did forget a lighter. Surprise. So oh. I do apologize in advance. Are we but lighting something in here? Pardon? Are we lighting something we up in here? We were going to, but uh, I don't have a lighter. Oh, look at uh, that. So you can blow out the imaginary wow. cupcakes Thanks, guys. That's for your birthday thoughtful. celebration. There you go. Make a All wish. All the Toronto wishes. <laughs> here, we Thank can take you it guys. back. That's sweet. Just make you hold it for Very the whole thoughtful. interview. How was your birthday? How was release week? How's it was it been? great. It's, it's been really cool. We spent like the whole week in New York City, and I had my family, and uh, you know, we had a few days off to kind of make some cool family memories, and then. Yeah, just running around New York City, getting to promote the album and uh, see the fans' responses and reactions. And uh, I played a show in New York. So, yeah, it was a great week and a, and a great birthday, yeah. for sure. and going on Fallon, Good Morning Yep, America. Fallon, all the things. It was like a busy day. Um, I think it was almost like a 24-hour day, for sure, but yeah. it was a great birthday. Totally. We got the most out of every hour. Yeah, I can imagine. How do you feel once the album was out into the world did you go on did you go online read things about yourself, yourself uh i did bit? i googled myself a couple times you know i said let me see what these uh what the fans are saying about this album and the music and it feels good to be honest just to have this out it's something i've been working on for quite some time now and uh it's fun to step into this new season and just have the opportunity to get to you know connect with the fans on a more personal level and, and you know get to introduce myself as an individual and uh yeah it's just a, a really cool opportunity i'm really grateful to kind of uh to get this chance to do this and feels good to have the music out yeah i was gonna ask do you feel like there's been a shift in the relationship with fans since going out on your own i think a little bit yeah it feels like I, again i mean i keep saying it but i feel like i can just go a little deeper with them mm -hmm. let them into my my life on a more uh personal level a little bit more vulnerable more authentic you know telling more of my story um because for the last 12 years it was um incredible but it was all about bk and i's story together as a as a partner as a duo as a band and, and so uh it's kind of a new dynamic which is really fueling me and giving me new energy and excitement and and creativity and uh it's a new challenge and anytime i'm sort of faced with a challenge i you know it gets me going it gets my my wheels turning and gets me excited to, you know, to kind of take it on. Yeah, a good challenge, though. Yeah, totally. fun challenge, for sure. Yeah, definitely. And I really do feel like we've learned so much about you in this album. Oh, that's it, good to it hear. It does get really deep. Um, do you feel like your fans then reach out to you a lot with their stories about, like, either losing their father or, totally. like, other things like that? Yeah, you know, you take a song like Tough, and, and, you know, it probably brings back memories or emotions for people who've been through a hard time. And to be honest, I think... <laughs> after the last few years we've all been through a hard time you know in some form or fashion so i do think uh it's connecting us on a deeper level and i'm hearing really cool stories and and yeah songs like miss my daddy and hearing people's story about how that touched them and maybe was healing for them or something like that it, to me it's just so rewarding and to me it's a reminder of man that's why i love to write songs yeah. and that's why i wanted to make this album and get this music out so it's cool to, to hear the fans stories and how they're connecting with it yeah definitely yeah that's so nice I lost my dad myself when I was younger which oh. I'm sure that many people have told you as well so when I was listening to the album just going through track by track that one came on and I was like oh uh -oh. Tyler yeah sorry hit me hard with that <laughs> one yeah thanks a lot um when you're writing for yourself versus like writing for Florida Georgia Line do, are there any challenges that come with that with kind of going from writing for that brand say than than to yourself? um maybe a little bit a little bit more challenging in a sense of having to be more uh you know really having to be conscious of telling my story you know but but ultimately i'm a songwriter yeah. first and foremost you know i write so many songs and i don't i've never really look at it as compartmentalizing a whole lot i just really go into a room with with the goal to write a good song and 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 then we can see where that song's going to live or, or where it fits but a lot of times when you're you know, you're diving in, you get you get going on an idea or a concept, and you're like, this feels really real to me. Maybe this is something I'll record. And then as the day goes, if the song turns into something that I could see myself singing forever, then I'm like, now it's like, okay, this tells my story. This is something that I love. You know, I'm, I'm really connected uh, emotionally to this song. So, yeah, I'll put this on the album. But really, it's just fun to just try to go write the best song that that room has yeah. for the day. Yeah. Are those boxes then that you have to check off when you're deciding I between like the hundreds of songs that you write to then narrow it down? I think so a little bit, yeah. you know, whether it's, sub, you know, subconscious or whether it's, you know, very literally. But I, but I feel like 
for me, it's it's all about um, not overthinking it and just trying to write a great song. And right. and I love getting outside cuts. I love pitching songs to friends who are artists and uh, almost more than recording my own music. So it's really it's a fun balancing act. And uh, you know, since I just put out this this first album, it's fun to to kind of get to write now and, and pitch to different artists and different friends. And yeah. you know, and and to get ready for the second album and hold on to songs that feel really um, you know, like they're me and like something I want to say. So. I was going to ask you, uh, with writing so many songs for this album, are there songs that you kind of have in your back pocket that you're like, oh, that'll be on the second album? Or do you just like start from scratch? Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I do both. I, yeah. I do have a couple that um, I'll probably revisit that didn't make the first album just to see. Um, but I've already been writing a whole lot, mm -hmm. and I have a handful of songs that I'm really excited about already for a second album, so it's a nice. good place to be. Nice. We're excited, too. I mean, we just got the first album, but I'm ready for more whenever. <laughs> got to get ready for that second one. Yeah. yeah. Have you right. ever written a song for another artist and then later thought, like, oh, I, I wish I kept that one for myself? Uh, not really. There's definitely been some songs that have been recorded that I just really love as a writer and, and an artist and songs that I would re-record or love singing myself, you know, like... Make It Easy by Jason Aldean, for example. That's one of my favorites. And there's a, there's a, there's definitely a list, but those are great because it's nice to be a songwriter and to still be really proud mm -hmm. of hearing a song you wrote on the radio, you yeah. know, um, as opposed to thinking, man, I wish that was my song. I don't really feel that. I, I just feel, I still feel a lot of pride and, and uh, as a songwriter. And, and like I said, there's really nothing better than having an, another artist believe in a song that you wrote enough True. to record it and to make it a single so that's really rewarding in, in my in yeah, my different space kind of proud least. yeah for sure yeah i love that so much you've said in an interview a few months ago your dream collaboration would be either jack harlow or justin timberlake mm. that was a few months Both since you said that H have we made any progress uh, have you slid into any DMs? jack hadn't hit me up yet no, he hasn't hit you up yet? yet you gotta hit, uh, hit him up but i'm sure he's about to listen to the new album mm -hmm. And then he's gonna hit me up. I can right. Tell I feel like we need to like send your fans into his DMs to just <laughs> yeah, like bombard just them. Like, needs to be you should work with Tyler. No, we'll see. He's actually a Kentucky dude. I feel like we'd be buddies, and so uh, you never know. When the time's right, it'll work out. Yeah, definitely. Sure. And you're from Monroe, Georgia. I am. Um, my sister actually lives like 30 minutes from there. Really? I have yet to visit. She just moved there like a couple months ago. Really? Yeah, Auburn. Small world. Do you know where oh, that yeah, is? Yeah. yeah. Anyways, so if you were to spend the day, say we were to spend the, uh, the day in your hometown together, what are the types of things that we would get up to? Ooh, I'd probably take you back to where I grew up in the country and show you a few pastures that I <laughs> worked in. And then I probably would probably walk down Main Street and I hear it's actually really cool now. Oh, yeah. So I would probably be discovering my hometown again yeah. uh, with you as well. It's been a while since I've been there, but I hear it's amazing and it's kind of got this new cool charm and character because when I was growing up there, it still had that, but it was sort of a rundown farm town, you know, and now mm -hmm. they've sort of given it a facelift. Apparently people come there and stay in, there's a boot boutique hotel now. Wow, apparently. fancy. So, yeah, so, uh, so I need to go visit. But yeah, I can, I would take you down Main Street, show nice. you the uh, few little spots that I remember as a kid, you know, maybe show you the high school that I went to. And yeah. Love Those it. Things. All right, next interview that we do. Let's we'll do a road trip to Georgia. There you go. Let's make it happen. Meet you there. Um, you've talked about, like, when you were starting out or before you were in music that you had a car detailing business. And you've said that, like, if you weren't doing music, you would probably just, like, start your own business. There, I feel like there's specific people that are just, like, meant to be entrepreneurs. And I feel like you're just, like, one of those people with, like, opening a restaurant and things like that. Is there any business venture that you are interested or curious about pursuing that you haven't already? Hmm. You know, that's a good question, and mentally I hadn't thought about it in, in a while because I've been really focused on, uh, you know, what I'm doing right now. But I am an entrepreneur, and I, and I do uh, – I got that from my dad. He was always kind of, you know, starting companies and, and, you know, getting bored quickly and moving on to the next one and starting different things. And, uh, you know, so I do have that in me, and uh, randomly I'll, I still love tossing around ideas with friends and stuff like that. But at the top of, off the top of my head, um, I don't know what I would do exactly. The it depends on where I'm at and what yeah. I'm doing. I was just in the mountains, and I thought if I wasn't doing music, I would just be a, a, a ski coach, and I would, you know, run the uh, the cat machines and, you yeah. know, live the mountain life. I think that sounds fun. But uh, but who knows? I'm, I really love getting to, to do music and yeah. – uh, it beats washing cars, that's for sure. <laughs> I can imagine, for sure. Before I let you go, I want to talk about Terry Crews. Oh, yeah. Let's this talk crazy. Terry. How did that come about? He's in the video. Yeah, he was in the Dancing in the Country video. Yeah. And, 
it's just a sort of a dream come true you know we 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 had the idea the concept the treatment for the video and then we were like who do we who you know we need someone special for this role it has to be very specific and Terry Crews was at the top of the list and we yeah. thought you know let's just see maybe he'll be in this video and we reached out and for some reason he said yes <laughs> and we got super excited and thought man this is going to be amazing and it was even more amazing than we imagined. Terry's an awesome guy. He's got super some moves. fun to be around. Got some moves. And just good energy. I mean, he really made that set and that day, that shoot, like just really special. And yeah. uh really enjoyed working with him and he brought that video to life and it's great. Uh it was it was a really cool experience. Nice. Tyler, again, happy belated birthday. Congrats Thank on you. the album. Appreciate Thanks so much it. for taking the time. Thanks for hanging. Yeah, Appreciate you chatting.